The Nurse and the Wolf As a wolf was hunting up and down for his supper, he passed by the door of a house where a little child was crying loudly. Hold your tongue, said the nurse to the child, or I'll throw you to the wolf. The wolf, hearing this, waited near the house, expecting that she would keep her word. The nurse, however, when the child was quiet, changed her tone and said, If the naughty wolf comes now, we'll beat his brains out for him. The wolf thought it was then high time to be off. Serves me right, growled he. I shall starve to death if I listen to idle threats. He who threatens most does least. The Ant and the Cocoon An ant, nimbly running about in the sunshine in search of food, came across a cocoon that was very near its time of change. The cocoon moved its tail and thus attracted the attention of the ant, who then saw for the first time that it was alive. Poor creature, cried the ant disdainfully, what a sad fate is yours! While I can run hither and thither at my pleasure, and, if I wish, ascend the tallest tree, you lie imprisoned here in your shell, with power only to move a joint or two of your scaly tail. The cocoon heard all this, but did not try to make any reply. A few days after, when the ant passed that way again, nothing but the shell remained. Wondering what had become of its contents, he felt himself suddenly shaded and fanned by the gorgeous wings of a beautiful butterfly. Behold in me, said the butterfly, your much pitied friend. Boast now of your powers to run and climb as long as you can get me to listen. So saying, the butterfly rose in the air, and borne along on the summer breeze was soon lost to the sight of the ant forever. Judge not alone by the present. The Fowler, the Partridge, and the Rooster One day, as a fowler was sitting down to a scanty supper of herbs and bread, a friend dropped in unexpectedly. The larder was empty, so he went out and caught a tame partridge, which he kept as a decoy, and was about to wring her neck when she cried, Surely you won't kill me! Why, what will you do without me next time you go fowling? How will you get the birds to come to your nets? He let her go at this, and went to his hen house, where he had a plump young rooster. When the rooster saw what he was after, he too pleaded for his life, and said, If you kill me, how will you know the time of night? And who will wake you up in the morning, when it is time to get to work? The fowler, however, replied, You are useful for telling the time, I know, but for all that I can't send my friend supperless to bed, and therewith he caught him and wrung his neck. In times of need, people reveal their true regard for others. <laughs>